Take us through the day Kennedy was shot, November 22nd, 1963. Yeah, it was a, it was a very tragic event, obviously. Um, and it was one of those events that personally um, is, is chiseled uh, uh, into my brain. I happened to have actually been in French class in, at Brooklyn Technical High School. An announcement came over the public address system. I remember um, we had a very animated, lively, fun uh, French teacher named Mr. Tron. And he was, he was giving a lesson and writing on the, the uh, chalkboard when uh, William Papps, the principal of the school, made an announcement over the PA. He asked everyone to stop work and he announced that um, President Kennedy uh, had been shot, uh, taken to the hospital. Uh, no one knew yet about his condition and you know, silence fell over the room. Uh, I can still picture Mr. Tron um, walking to his desk. He never sat during class. He walked to his desk and he sat down and he had nothing to say, nor did anyone else. And it was, uh, it's, still, it's still an emotional uh, thing. You idolize Martin Luther King Jr. And in one instance, you actually, you walked out of, you marched out of school um, in, in support of the civil rights movement. Could you tell us about that day? Sure, um, I didn't actually march out of school. This was planned in advance. Um, it was, um, it was really my first involvement beyond uh, my own thinking and just speaking to my friends. So we planned that instead of going to class uh, the following day, whenever this day was, that we would instead um, uh, pick at the school and carry uh, Jim Crow must go signs uh, in support of the civil rights movement. And uh, that's what we did, and it was it was very it was very thrilling. Um, uh, one of the things we observed was that most students, and you know, keep in mind we're talking about high school students now, and most students simply crossed the picket line and went into school, and there was no effort to physically stop anybody. But something that that I was very impressed with was that a number of teachers arrived at school to go into the building read our signs, talked to us for a minute, and left. They did not go to work that day. Um, the police were called, and a platoon of police officers came. I, I don't think we were more than a few hundred students at, at the most. Um, but they took everyone's name, but let us continue with what we were doing. It was almost a message that the New York City administration, including the police department, thought we were doing the right thing. After college, you became a Vietnam War protester. Uh, and at, at about the same time, uh, you became more involved in what is now called the counterculture. How did that transition occur? Martin Luther King um, made, uh, 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 made a speech um, that was essentially an anti-war speech. And um, when I first heard that speech, I, I was kind of ambivalent about the war at that time. And I heard the speech and I actually initially disagreed with him. I didn't quite understand why he was mixing the civil rights movement with the uh, war in Vietnam. And eventually, I came to understand it very clearly as my own thinking uh, and, and my own education about the war um, started to materialize. And you know, one of the, the civil rights movement and the, uh, and the, uh, the anti-war movement were inextricably intertwined. If you went to college, which generally meant that you came from a family that could afford to send you. Um, City College was an anomaly because most of us at City College couldn't afford to go to private school. But if you had parents who could afford to send you to college, you had a student deferment and were not eligible for the draft. On the other hand, 
if you came from a, a poor background uh, and you were uh, on that point on the socioeconomic scale where college was really not in the cards uh, and many, many black people in America, um, f uh, especially young black people in America, uh, because of generations of severe race discrimination, didn't have the equal opportunities to go to college that developed in, in the decades to follow the 1960s. So the people, the young men who were eligible for the draft and were drafted in disproportionately great numbers were black. And they were being sent to Vietnam. No one said because they were black, but the government was okay with sending people to, to, to Vietnam um, who were not in college, and who were they? Uh, and they were, they were poor, uh, they, were, they were black, uh, and, uh, and they were dying uh, f uh, for this war. And th that connection was very powerful. What did you do to avoid the draft? I took enough education courses um, in college. It, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a minor but I took enough credits in education to uh, qualify to be able to uh, get a, uh, what they called at the time, a provisional teaching license for uh, New York, uh, the New York City Board of Education. And when I graduated from college, I applied for a job as a teacher. Um, uh, teaching provided an occupational deferment. Uh, again, another example of where um, certain groups in America, uh, notably white people who uh, had the, the means of achieving these occupational deferments, were able to continue even beyond college now uh, what to, to be deferred, uh, and, and thousands and thousands of of college students became teachers for this very reason, whereas other groups did not qualify. Who of your friends went to fight? I had a particular friend named Mark Goldberg, um, and Mark uh, uh, was enthusiastic. Um, he, was, he was drafted and went to uh, proudly serve. Sadly, uh, Mark uh, came home as a heroin addict and eventually um, uh, died very, very young uh, due to some organ failure caused by his use of, uh, of heroin. You became a civil rights lawyer. Why? I think my, um, uh, my life was shaped by many uh, people and events. The earliest uh, uh, would have been my grandmother. My grandmother was born in the late 1880s in an area of Poland that was often controlled by Russia. My grandmother um, was, um, she experienced the pogroms. Uh, she experienced the official government action when uh, the Cossacks, for example, would come into her town and loot the homes of Jews and rape the daughters of Jews. And if you protested, you got killed. Sorry. And Jewish people were picked on for the simple reason that they were Jewish. Um, and I remember her telling me stories, literally, sitting on her lap. And she instilled in me this um, sense that no one, no one should ever be judged by um, their religion. And it was an easy transformation for me to recognize that no one should ever be judged by their color, uh, their ethnic origin, uh, their national origin, and as Martin Luther King so aptly put it, only by the content of the character.